So, I just got back from Monica's place. It was a party. <clears throat> the theme was martinis and melodrama. Party was called for 7.30 p.m. and I arrived at uh, 7.30 p.m. I was the first one to arrive. Monica was dressed like a tiger and reflecting her true inner self. And I immediately sat down at her dining room table and generously helped myself to tabbouleh and hummus and uh, this pasta dish and uh, I hadn't eaten dinner because I knew she was cooking and I haven't eaten this well since Lemud LA about a month ago so I just went to town then <clears throat> these two graphic designers showed up so women so for the next half hour these three women discuss martinis so here I am an intellectual I mean, my life is all about Hashem and his mitzvahs. And these girls are just talking about martinis and alcohol and drinking and... I can't relate to that stuff. I have no interest in this Gashmias. I'm into Ruchnias, the, the things of the spirit. Hashem. Luckily, these four grad students, scruffy dressed grad students come along. They knew Monica from a grad student retreat at Cornell. And uh, I got into this fascinating discussion with this short tubby guy who's doing research about uh, food and race in the South. And so he's researching 19th century Southern cookbooks and finding all the inherent racism in there. And uh, I managed to keep asking questions, get him to spill it out, because he's doing this research and he emphasized that he doesn't need to get preachy with it about how America is oppressed the blacks and uh, women and and other minorities and oppressed groups and 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 ignored their stories and just written stories of America and history as white male history but thanks to his research he doesn't need to get preachy about it and so I was just getting this fascinating word about 19th century southern cookbooks and how they ignored the blacks who who prepared the meals that were then served by by white women and I don't know what happened, but suddenly I found myself stuck for the rest of the night talking to this gorgeous blonde shiksa. And the whole time I was thinking, damn, I wish I could be back discussing 19th century southern cookbooks. Because here I am, I'm talking to this woman who was a cheerleader in high school, along with Monica. They were both cheerleaders. And this woman's just absolutely gorgeous, and she's blonde. She's slender, perfect nose, ivory skin, uh, ivory snow skin, just uh, smart, educated, accomplished, successful, intelligent. Uh, and the whole time I said, like, why am I talking to this non-Jewish woman when I could talk to this guy about racism in 19th century Southern cookbooks? Like, here I was talking to this gorgeous, beautiful, stunning, enchanting, entrancing, stimulating, captivating woman when I could be discussing with a tubby short guy 19th century Southern cookbooks. It's a shame because, as you know, I'm all about Hashem and his mitzvahs. I'm all about Ruknius, not Gashmius, the things of the spirit rather than things of this world. And sure, this woman did have her good qualities. She was a cheerleader in high school, and she still does have those high school cheerleading outfits. And I realized that <clears throat> for many guys, this would be, oh, cool, that's so cool, man. I've got a fetish about cheerleaders. Oh, I wonder if she still <clears throat> fits into those outfits. And I know how many people think, but I am so many years past that. Like, I'm not a teenager anymore. And I understand that there could be like a certain thrill to, say, going out to dinner with this former cheerleader. And, Sure, you know, I could get my head around how, like, just like looking in her eyes and talking to her would be, you know, I guess on like a very low base spirit you know, level, unspiritual, it could be, you know, enchanting to sit across dinner at candlelight and just like talk to this woman for hours and like just let your eyes gaze on her skin and her face and her blonde hair and smell so good and such a lovely shape to her physique and. I could understand how on some level that that would be pleasurable. Understand how on some level, you know, I can conceive a kind of 
work my head around and understand how I could possibly enjoy that. And, you know, maybe a walk on the beach, like running through the waves, holding hands, like clambering over rocks together, you know, and then like meeting for that big hug and then like the surf pounding and then we're sitting on the rocks and the first time you like you lean in for that kiss and like look into her perfect blue eyes and just lose yourself in them and you like run your fingers through her blonde hair and you know I can see how on some level for some people this would be like this would be fun for some people this would be like even better than fun but for me for a guy who's all about Torah Hashem and his mitzvahs you know I just don't see the the future in this because like let's say you, you you created a life together and so you had several decades of just great great times together like you took her to New York and to Australia and you traveled the world together and and she was like exciting and stimulated and educated and smart and fun and funny and just a good person and like her body is just a wonderland and like you've got the e ticket to go to Disneyland and I can understand how for several decades that would be fun, but like after 50 years, you know, would that still be so much fun? Would that still be rewarding? And, you know, I can like look back on my life now, 50 years from now, and I look back and think about 50 years that I spent with this gorgeous blonde and, and just think about what, you know, all the mitzvahs that I could have done if instead I'd spent that time with a frizzy haired, buck tooth, big nosed, menopausal, overweight, Jewess. Like how much more fulfilling that would be if I could just, instead of spending my time with this gorgeous sh shiksa cheerleader, if I could just you know, settle down with a nice overweight, 15 pounds, like really big hefty thighs, um, you know, 50 years old, um, you know, the frizzy hair that's kind of thinning, and uh, really big nose, and uh, you know, I think that'd probably be a much more meaningful and uh, and rewarding life. And so here I am, I'm stuck talking to this gorgeous, captivating, smart, intelligent, provocative woman. Smells really good, looks really good. And I'm thinking, damn, I wish I could be spending time with some frizzy head, overweight, menopausal Jewess with buck teeth and a big nose. Well, at least, at least let me just hang out with the guy who's pontificating on 19th century southern cookbooks and the racism therein that was such a stimulating conversation why why am I here talking to someone who's just like an absolute delight and just so much fun to hang around with and really funny and cute and gorgeous and captivating and enchanting and entrancing and smells good and feels good and tastes good and looks good like why can't I just get back to that tubby short you know, academic leftist and spend my time finding out about cookbooks like where's the overweight menopausal Jewess when I need